We are going to listen to the word of the Lord very soon. The title is, Where is the Word? Where is the Word? It's a question. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to hear your word. Speak through me to us, and may we hear, and may we do, may we believe, and may we practice, and may we be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, amen. amen. All right. The word of God is very important. The word of God gives us a lot of information. Or the word of God are words. And there are a lot of words in the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. I believe that apart from the word of God teaching us salvation and how to be saved, the next important thing that the, Lord, the, the word of God teaches us is how to treat it how to handle it, and how to do with it. Because everything we get after salvation depends on how we treat this word of God. Hallelujah. So what I said is that there are a lot of teachings or there are a lot of things the Bible teaches us. Topmost is how to be saved. But after how we are saved, the word of God itself also teaches us how to treat the word of God and how to treat or how to do with the word of God or to the word of God. I believe it is the second most important thing so that every other thing it teaches us, we will know how to treat it. Hallelujah. And in our church, in this church, as we all know, all we got is the word of God. We all of our faith and hope is in the word. We are people of faith. We believe in the word of faith. And we believe in Jesus. So much that our, our, all of our faith is in the word. Because Jesus is the word of God. And so if you are a member of this church. You have to know how to treat the word of God. Uh, how you handle the word of God. Will determine a lot in your life. How you treat your attitude towards the word of God is going to determine, is a springboard that will determine a lot of things in your life. Hallelujah. And so we have to be people who are skilled in handling the word of truth. And that is what we are about to learn this morning. Amen. Now, we all have a lot of important things in our lives, in our families, in our homes. We all have things we value and things we do not really value because of the price attached to it. Now, the things that we value are kept at safe places and we guard them. We put them in safes. We put them in places where children cannot reach out of reach of children. And uh, we have to know how to keep things that are valuable to you. Otherwise, you will lose them. So whilst we all have a lot of valuable things and we all have our own ways of keeping our valuable things, one day somebody told me that he knows somebody, somebody close to him in his life keeps his money in his fridge. That person is here. He's looking at my face. He said that Nisika, okay, ni papa, because I don't mention the, pe the person's father. Is the last place you go and look for money. The person is in church. If I have a permission, like I'll mention his name. <laughs> but I think that the, the father has stopped you because the way he was telling me, so like that's what he used to do. So when he got bundles of money, when he's paid, he'd go and withdraw the money. And he put it in a lot of rubber. Then he'll put it in the fridge. When armed robbers come to the house, that fridge is the last place they go. And when they go to the fridge, the money will be in some black polythene bag wrapped. If they, if they are hungry and they want to eat, don't check the polythene bag. 
They will take the bowls. They will take the protein bag and they will throw it away. They will think that it's some more money that, or some salmon that is inside. So I'm, 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 I'm bringing that out. So Obiani said that you may be able to see cash. You know, yesterday somebody was telling me that he will never put his money in the bank. He doesn't have a bank. He's 36 years old. He doesn't have a bank account. He'll never have a bank account. And he knows how to keep his money. So things that are valuable to us, we all know how to keep it. Now, you know the women, the, the jewelries, you know the slippers you bought at Cantamanto for 13 CDs. Try my shoes, maybe boy, the baby see if you see where it is in your house and the jewels that you bought for that amount, you see where you have kept them. Now, we all have the word of God all the time. And the word of God comes to us all the time. Beloved, there is nothing you have that is more valuable than the word of God. We have been trained and we also have devised ways of keeping things that are important to us. That's why your money is not in the house. You're going to put it in the bank. What is a security man? It's a safe. And they, are, they, are, they have invested it somewhere. What we have not been properly taught is how to preserve and keep the word of God. Because it is more important than money, than gold. And then, so when you read uh, Proverbs chapter 2, Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 4, the beginning verses of all these chapters talking about how the word of God is more precious than silver and gold. Have you read it before? The word of God is precious than silver and gold. Even God, he, because he knows how important gold and silver and bauxite and those things are to us, he kept it under the earth to teach us that precious things must be protected and preserved and hidden from uh, arm robbers. Beloved, we have to learn how to preserve, keep, and store the word of God because it is the most valuable thing we have and we will ever have. And so, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if you receive my word and treasure my commands within you, now, the word of God must be kept. You must first know the keeping place, the place you keep. There are things that you store in the washroom. There are things you keep in the storeroom. There are things you keep in the wardrobe. There are things you keep in different parts of your house. And there are things you don't put in your pocket. There are things you don't put in your back pocket. You put here. Now, the word of God, keeping and retaining the word of God, it's not how you keep your Bible. Where it is, like, oh, there are two shelves. So, an hour, I pull the story to a to sell a full scalp. You want to, you are preserved? No. The word of God must be treasured and must be treasured within us. The storage place or where we keep the word is within us. Where the word himself, who is Jesus, lives, Christ in you. The word of God in you. So the Bible says in Colossians, let the word of God dwell in where? The location is your heart. In you. How? How? Richly. So, how you present the word of God is not where you keep your Bible or how you keep your Bible, but how you keep the words that have left the Bible through your ears or your eyes into you. How you safeguard it. Mark chapter 4. From the verse number 13 to 20. I just want to read it real quick, beloved. The word of God that he has sent to you or he sends to you from the beginning of the year till now has been sent to accomplish a purpose, beloved. I'm asking you today, where is the word of God? All of us who hear the word of God are categorized into four different people. And you have to genuinely ask yourself, which type of heart, the storage container or place where we keep and treasure and safeguard the word of God, which one are you? And you have to sincerely answer. 
And from today, after this sermon, take steps to make sure that you are in the last category. The heart that is able to retain the word of God. Do you, know that, do you understand? If you don't understand this parable, then you don't understand all parables because it is the matter of all parables. That's what I'm saying that. And it is the parable about the word of God. That's what I'm saying that. It is this verse that informed the statement I made earlier. That aside the Bible teaching us salvation, the next important thing it teaches us is our attitude towards the word and how we store or retain the word. So Jesus is saying that this parable, if you don't understand it, you will not understand all other parables. It means that this subject I'm about to teach today, if you don't understand it and you don't practice it, it means that all the sermons I have preached before and the ones I'll preach, I will ever preach to you as long as I'm your pastor. You will not understand it. If you don't understand it, it won't bless you and you wasted your time and, I don't know, you become unproductive. So here, the Bible says that, he goes on and says, let me read it real fast. When you go home, go and read it well. In more than one translations, and tell yourself the truth, that either you are category A, B, or C. Next verse, please, let's move fast. The sower, the sower sows the word, like I have sown from January, and I'm yet about to sow. And, and these are the ones that fall by the wayside, where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes. So Satan comes because we have heard. Hey, maybe you don't want Satan to come down here. But you hear. <laughs> Immediately, he takes it away. The weather has been sown in their heart. It was sown. The weather, once you hear, it has entered your heart. But how is Satan able to take somebody's and he cannot take another's? That's what I'm about to teach you here today. You'll be blessed. Let's go on. He says that he will come. And then there's another one, another group of people. It is sown in Tony ground. Who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Like many of us or all of us. The word God is exciting. Pastor has preached. Pastor can preach. What a word. What a word. I'm blessed. E. some of Bible, E. You are blessed in this room. Whilst you are going home, you are still blessed. When Monday starts, and they and they have no root in them. So how does the word of God hini? How does the word the immediately doesn't have ni hini? When you sow the seed, it doesn't have root. There are things you do to the, the seed for the seed to get root. Hallelujah. I'm a teacher of the word of God. That's what I was born to do. And because that is all I do, and that is what I believe I can do best, I owe it to you, not only to teach you, but also to teach you how to treasure and how to appropriate and handle what I teach you. Otherwise, just teaching you and leaving the knowledge with you, I haven't helped you much. That's why the Bible also, like I said, it teaches us how to be saved. And after that, all that salvation brings to us it teaches us how to handle the word so that we can understand what salvation brought to us. Pay attention to me this morning. Afterward, when tribulation and persecutions, we, which are constant in this life, arises, for the word's sake, we get the Sometimes we think that all tribulation and persecutions and troubles are because of Satan and our sins and all of that and our mistakes. No. Over here, we also see another category of persecution. That comes be, for whose sake? For whose sake? For the word. As I'm not here, Nintino. Persecution has come. Immediately they stumble because the word didn't have roots in their lives. So, how, what are you about to teach? What I'm about to teach you today is how to let the word of God get roots in your life, in your heart. So that now there's another one. Now, these are those when the word is sown among tongues. They are the ones that hear the word and the cares of this world. For some people, it's not persecutions and trouble, but the cares of the, the, the light bill, water bill, internet, data. How to eat, putting body work, natural concerns, the cares of this life. 
the bills of life and deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things. Other things need there. Everybody is covered. In case yours is not the case of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and yeah, other things, everything is boxing over there. The word of God is very detailed. Entering, choke the word. Choke the word. And they become unfruitful. You see, 419, never forget. 419 is Satan. You see, Mark 419, it's 419. It's not good. Then you go down. Then you see, there's another one, the good ground, talking about the heart. When they hear the word, they accept it, and they bear fruit. 30, 60, and 100. And that is what every word is supposed to do in your life. Some words, some sermons can depend on the root you give it, how you retain it, can bear fruit a hundred, some sixty, some, and all this, this variations. And I'm asking you today that the sermon I've put you from January, what fruit has it borne in your life? I've done about six different series, Tuesdays and Sundays. What fruit has it borne in your life? Can you give account of a 30 or 60 or 100? If not, chances are you haven't retained the word of God. You haven't kept it. And so you are losing it. Or Satan has come to steal it long time ago. This morning we are about to make corrections. Hallelujah. The word of God must always be hidden. Psalm 119 verse 11. I pray. After this sermon, my prayer is that we all come to Acts chapter 4. Sorry. Mark chapter 4 verse 20. No matter where you are, listen, if you are in the first or second or third category, it's not a problem. Staying there is the problem. We have the chance always through like a sermon like this to appropriate yourself, to, to work yourself and come to a place where you are not as 419, but you are 420. Where the word is bearing fruit in your lives. Hallelujah. Your word have I hidden. David, the man after God's own heart, was because he was a master of hiding the word. The word I preach, the power of imagination, part one to three, where is it? Is it hidden? I hope it is hidden. If it is not hidden, now listen, the reason why we have to hide it, we have to keep it, because there's a word thief. When the Bible talks about Satan in John 10, 10, that he come to steal, kill, and destroy. Many people, many people just think that he's just coming after your marriage, your business, your job, your car. No. Before he can attack these things, he first has to steal the We saw him. That Satan comes immediately and steals the word. If he's not able to steal the word, he cannot steal your car. He cannot steal your heart. He cannot steal your, 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 your possessions. If you see him stealing something successfully, it means he has already or earlier stolen the word. Or, this is the big one, he has prevented you from hearing it in the first place. Satan is smart. If I was Satan, the chances that I may I will prevent the word from being sown. Because if it gets, if it gets sown, there are things you can do to let it get root and I cannot steal it. So he has become a master today in preventing you from reading your Bible and going to church. So that the word is not sown at all. His work is easy. Then, his work is easy. And I'm a boy. If I'm Satan, I'll rather turn my preoccupation on preventing people from hearing the word. So that I don't have to go and steal the word before I will steal their health. Their health is exposed and I can just go in and break it. Are you understanding what I'm teaching you? So the word of God must be hidden because of, of a word thief. Mark chapter 4 verse 14. The sower saw the word. Look here. When we were told that the guy is a thief. The place, the only place we saw him displaying thievery skills 
was towards the word. I have, the Bible has not said he went to take it. Other transla modern translations, give me 15. Other translations will say that he came to steal it. He came to take without permission. How have you trained your child if you take without permission in his world? Stealing. He comes to steal the word. Satan comes immediately and takes away the word because he will come and take it. You safeguard it. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I'm come to teach you about six things we can do to retain the word, to preserve or to keep the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Great. And you will be blessed. Number one, the first thing that you need to preserve and to keep or safeguard the word of God is understanding. So, before you come and listen to the word of God, beloved, you pray for understanding. You pray for understanding. Don't just listen to the word of God. Don't just pick your Bible and read. Begin your quiet time with prayer and pray for understanding. Why is understanding important. Even before understanding, beloved, you have to be excited about the word of God. You have to be happy that you are going to the house of the Lord to go and listen to the word of God. You have to be excited about the word of God. You have to love the word of God. You have to read the word of God with joy. You have to be happy that you are coming to church, not just because you are coming to sing praises and to dance, but do you come with a certain joy in your heart because of the sermon it must be active. It must be particular. You must come with joy. Amen. And you must come prayed up. And you must come, you see, Matthew 13, 19. Write this verse down. Let me show you something. Matthew 19, 13. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the wicked one comes and snatch away what has been sown in their heart. This is what I'm talking about. If you hear the word of God and you don't understand it, you, you shouldn't have heard it. You are better off not hearing it. Amen. It's like you have cooked granite soup. Uh, you spend money to, you've gone to the market, you've cooked granite soup, and you put it, you're going to put it where you have, you have a two-year-old child in the house, and you put your granite soup on the center table, and you say, you are going to dry your things and come back. What is here? So, the word of God, if you hear and you don't understand, you have wasted your time. So, before you hear the word of God, so I'm going to teach you what you have to do before you hear, what you must do when you are hearing, and what you will do after you have heard. So, before, because understanding is critical, you come into services on your way Saturday during the week before you come here in your car coming, praying Ephesians 1.18 that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Praying Psalm 119 verse 18. Open my eyes that I will behold wondrous things out of your word. Beloved, understanding is key because if you don't understand, Satan will come and take it out. So understanding becomes one of the things we know that gives the word root. The word has no root and Satan can just come and take it away. That is why we spend a lot of hours praying for this understanding in this church because we pray the word of God a lot. And we have a lot to understand. There are some churches that don't pray for understanding. They don't pray efficient. They don't pray sad prayers. Open my eyes to behold one does things out of you. They want God to open their eyes to see who is doing them. Their mother's side and father's side. The people, they just want to know their direction. And there are people want to know something. It's okay to know. What? Well, it's not bad to know. But before you know, if you know that alone and don't know the one does things in the word, it doesn't profit you anything. So we, we pray that prayer a lot because we are taught a lot. And we have too much to understand. And we don't pray Ephesians 1.18 enough. Because if, we do, because if we don't understand, 
Mark 13, 19 says that he will come and steal the word. So before you come, you come with a hunger, you come with joy, and you come prayed up. And that is why we start our services with prayer. And we pray for understanding. Missing prayer, the prayer session that maybe for some reasons, you didn't pray before coming. Saturday, you didn't prepare your heart. When you were coming, you were so late, you couldn't even pray. That's why you must get here before 8 or by 8 and be part of the prayer. When we start the church, we start with prayer. And one of the prayers you pray is Ephesians 1, 18. That he will open the eyes on us because we are anticipating a word that is coming that by all means we must understand. So missing prayer sessions on Sunday morning is a sin. You are harming your own self. I want you to come early. If you come early, what, what does it profit me? If you don't come early, what does it do to me? If you come early, me, I'm a I'm a kind of yacho. You don't want you to come early so that you feel good that people are coming early. No. You come early to be part of the prayer for understanding. Amen. Now, that is number one. Number two, during the listening or reading of the word, we pay attention. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. In the NIV, my son, pay attention to what I say. Pay attention. Turn your ears to my word. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them in the, within your heart. Keep them. Keep them within your heart. Keep them within your heart. You and that is your responsibility. Your pastor's responsibility is to hear from God. Know what he, he has to preach to you. He preaches to you. You got a responsibility to keep it within your heart. To brood over it so that it gets food. If you don't do your own responsibility, God has done that. He's spoken to he, God has done his spoken to your pastor. Your pastor has preached. If your responsibility is not performed, Satan also has a responsibility that he will come and perform on the word. He will come and steal it then God has done his part. Your pastor has done his part. You have done your part. Satan has also done his part. So it's 3-1. Three, 3-0. Three and that becomes your result. The nail becomes your result. Hallelujah. The word that has been translated pay. You see, when we say pay, it means you owe. We owe the word of God. No, 20 we owe the word of God attention. Now, when you hear pay, it means you owe. And what we owe the word of God when it is coming to us is rapt attention. Maximum attention. A king is speaking to you. The, the king of kings is talking to you. You better give him your, 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 your 100% attention. You dare not give him 99% attention. He needs your rapt attention. That is why you must make sure that you are attentive. Your phones are off or on silent. And one sitting next to you, your posture must be correct. Your sitting posture must be correct. Your eyes must be fixated. And you must have a certain hunger in your eyes. Because a king is talking to you. Rapt attention. The word pay over there. In the King James, you hear, you see pay heed. Or take heed. Give earnest heed. That word there is kwashab. Q-A-S-H-A-B. Q-A-S-H-A-B. Kwashab. It means to prick up your ears. Kwashab. It means to prick up your ears. To God's word. Do you know prick up? Prick up is pay attention. Pay maximum attention. Your ears must be open. You see, when God is talking to you, those days, thank God for Momo and interpretability and all this tap tap send all over the place. At first, one day to give us Western Union, that 10 digits, MoneyGram and Western Union, when your auntie or your uncle remembers you, and they call you that take a pen and paper. You see the way your ears. You see, all of us know how to break our ears. How many of you have 
receive that Western Union number before. Raise your hand. If you haven't, I'll, re I'll distribute some today. Receive one in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you don't give number. They send it down. They say, check your phone, check your phone, check your phone, check your phone. Check First, no, now you're true. Now you're called bank. Now you're called Johnny Lai. Who did lie to you, And EJ, and EJ, and EJ. Hey. Who can't call J? You see, when you're listening to those numbers, you see the attention that you pay. You have pricked your ears. It's not just you listening to any conversation. It's not just you listening to any music. But you have pricked your ear because you are listening to something important that is life changing or super kitchen changing. Hallelujah. Beloved, pricking your ears is like making your ears practically stand longer. Now at this point, give me my pictures. If you understand prick your ears, dogs and donkeys and cats prick their ears. Say, Abuano, prick up your ears. To prick your ears, usually the dogs, give me my, my dog, the dog in my house. Give me the dogs one. Usually their ears are like this. But when they hear a sound, when they hear any sound around, the dog's ear is always like this. These ears are not pregnant, but pay attention. When the dog hears outside, you realize that nest, then the ear has become like this. It just becomes like this. It stands. What did I hear? Do I have to run for my life? I have to listen well, whether it is my owner coming or arm robber. That is pricking ears. As soon as I will say, Pay attention. The word of God is. It's like, tell me more. I'm all ears. I'm all ears is quash up. Attention. Maximum attention. At this point, what you are fixated on, no matter what is happening around you, you cannot hear, you cannot see because when you are paying attention to something, somebody can be next to you. Hey, mommy, mommy, mommy. You cannot hear because you are paying attention. Beloved, when you come to church and the word of God is coming to you, this is how, oh, let me remove it, sir. Just let, so let's uh, remove the animals and show me the human beings. Let me show them what they have to do. This is to prick your ears. We prick our ears like this. Who is talking? God is talking. The word he used to change and to create the world. The word he spoke to Mary. And Mary conceived and gave birth to Jesus. The word he spoke to Peter, that cast it again, and it turned it. If, what if this Tuesday, and what if what God is speaking to me today, is what will bring my breakthrough? What if my own cast your net is what I am hearing in this? God is talking. Phone off. Everything you tell me about, don't disturb me. I'm, I, I'm about to listen. God is talking. My son, pay attention because all, many things will want your attention when I'm talking to you. You can be in church and your mind is not here. Your mind is wandering. God is talking. You are looking at a person's face. This is pricking your ears. It's like you have put a magnifier on your ear and you are hearing louder and clearer than anybody what i'm saying some people are hearing than any some some uh, i mean i mean others because some are here and as i'm preaching they are looking at my shirt as i'm preaching they're looking at this some are just paying attention to this some are just probably just admiring the 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 the, the the dynamism, the energy, and the, the 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 strength I'm using to preach, and you are just you are just a pastor can preach, and you are not paying attention to what I'm saying. I have another one. Put it up, and you want to. Then the women are fast. They are. They are. You are eavesdropping. When you are eavesdropping, when God is speaking, you have to listen and listen well. You have to, uh -huh. This is pick up your ears. They are talking. You have ears. You can be standing there and not hear. But if you prick your ears and you hear the door, 
you can close this one. They are talking here, you cannot hear because you have carried the megabyte here. You have added it to this one so you can hear. Then you are saying, then you run away. You have heard. But if you stood here like this, you hear. But when you do this, and you do this, and you suck this one, you hear. Beloved, if God is talking, talking, you look at people's attitude. God is talking, you are not writing. Umbua there. Umbua there. There's a, that's why we say right because there's a certain attention as those who are writing whether the attention and you who are not writing are the same because you have to listen store in the mind before you reproduce hey, it is all to help your attention my son Paul chapter 4 verse 20 my son when I'm speaking, your mind will be speaking. Your bills will be speaking. When I'm speaking, your, your Satan will also be speaking. Your needs will be speaking. Time will be speaking. Everybody will be speaking. But when I am speaking, pay attention. It takes effort. Magnifying glass. You have to. It takes effort. We owe the word of God our uttermost attention when it is coming to us. You see, when God was telling Peter that cast your net again, and Peter was thinking about the, the sick mother in law, Uncle Betty. Because the Lord, you said what? Cast the boat, cast it again. Nankwafa, na Otika, and now there are two baby, and I said one thing. You think Peter's breakthrough was in the word of God. He paid attention. Of course, he still had to work. But it started with the word of God. Beloved, in a church like this, if you don't train yourself to prick your ears, give the child, the child's one, the double, the double pricking. When God is talking, I prefer the child. It's not one or two. Maximum attention. Maximum attention. Otherwise, we will not hear. You will think you have heard. But when we are asked the following week, when you are asked a month later, when you are asked two months later or a year later, that is when you know that you didn't hear. Hallelujah. We owe the word of God our rapt attention. Quashab. One day, Paul is preaching, if you, it's okay. One day Paul is preaching in Acts chapter 14. You see, Acts chapter 14 from verse 7 to 10. It's an interesting thing over there. You see, as I'm talking right now, by the way, by your poster, the way you are sitting down and the way you are looking at me, I can tell any miracle can happen right now because I'm preaching the truth. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm telling you the truth. I'm preaching about the word of God. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm preaching Christ, who is the word of God, and how we ought to respect it. Beloved, one day, Paul is preaching. You've started downward to upwards. I'll come down. Acts chapter 14. No, verse 7. It has a 7 or 13. 7. Where they continue preaching the gospel. I put the gospel here every day like Paul, right? Okay. So Paul is preaching. And then the story continues that in Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been, he had been like that from birth and had never walked. He has a man, he's not a boy. It means he's been lame for a long time. People said he was about 38 years old. And he had never walked. Yeah, we don't know yet, but fine. But listen, they are preaching the gospel, and the man is lame. The Bible said he listened to Paul whilst Paul was speaking. And Paul looked at him, Paul looked directly at him and saw that he had failed to be healed. There's a certain attention that this this Bafine had. The Bible, he looked at him 
And as I'm looking, as I'm preaching, I can look at your face and I can see those who are. Sometimes I'm preaching, I call somebody's name. Sometimes I'm preaching, I want to go and touch somebody. Sometimes you, there's a certain connection and attention you can pay that our spirit will sink. Any miracle is possible. I can just call you. But when you are here and God is talking to you like this, and you are like you are here, you are not here, especially when the time you think which you close is up. <laughs> and look how put the hold the knot and say, We fear cry. Beloved, we have to be careful. The Bible said he, the way he listened, he listened to Paul as Paul was speaking. As Paul was speaking, he was listening. He was lame, but he was listening. And I can tell that this man had pricked his ears up. And Paul saw beyond the, he was too attentive. You know if somebody can pay attention to you and say, I don't know how you me, sir. Have you told your wife or your husband that before? It's like some, you have become uncomfortable. It's, it's just preaching and preaching. But the way you are looking at me it's like you are expecting to receive something from me. The Bible said Paul looked at him and immediately, he didn't even call the name of Jesus. He didn't pray. One of the most powerful prayers to me in the Bible, he just said, the next verse, the verse 10, and called out, I said, stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Not in Jesus' name, crapo. Stand up on your feet. Stand up. Stand up. That you have something bothering you all this week. And you have come to church and you are so attentive you are so expectant that a 38 year old problem you are so attentive that it is giving me pressure. Stand up. I look at you and say, anything you are going through in Jesus name today, it has ceased. If you are paying 100% attention, you get this man's results. The Bible says, stand up and that and, and I said, at that the man jumped and began to walk. No anointing oil. No Yesu Moja. No Inkuto. Nothing. It is what? The word of God plus paid ears. The word of God plus attention. People come to church. Think you are you are you are taking pictures, so you can you shouldn't write. You are in church, you get a call, you go, somebody's calling, God is calling. You don't have faith that this call can come again, even if it is life threatening, it can come again. You call the person later. You leave and go and answer. The word of God said, Damikasa, sometimes even if you are pressed and you have to go to the washroom, and sometimes you have to even wait some more if you if it's not a situation that can let you mess. Kakra no we pay. Kakra no we pay. Kakra say, you're not paying attention. Sometimes if it's pressing you and there's a condition that you must go. But sometimes there's a certain attention you pay that will shut those nerves that are making the thing come. We've all been there before. I'm telling you. Because your attention is divided. Some is on the word and some is on the pain. When God is talking, we listen well. He will see the miracle. Nothing. Yeah. Not, in the then Paul continued to preach. Yes, stand up and walk. The Paul, the Paul, yes, we are walk, you are walking. Glory to God. Yes, what was I saying? I said the grace of God is program. Because I said, Oh, it should be boom. It is just it was the same. It was the same in, in Acts chapter 3. At the beautiful gate. He, the Bible said that, I mean, when we are going to pray, eh? Peter, you are going to no. Peter, you are going to go to Then he said, I see, the Bible said that, you see, the guy was expecting money from them. He, you must be expecting something from the word. The word of God came in here. Have you placed a demand on it before you came here? You are not like the woman with the issue of blood. He has placed a demand on the word. He didn't place a demand on the on, on what Jesus was already knew. There was the one way on the cloth. Now it's not Peter Nash and Tare. It's the word. Place a demand on it. Say, Ufi Fiebano. 
Asem a pastor di babi ena asem ne media. O bompe one of understand. O ba eno sunu chese. Wa dreami na o asem no sum. Asem we meti e yemasem. Mi pe ye chuma. Uti e o tru bibia. We ni adi. When you do that, your life will change you. Even if I don't pick your problem and say stand up, the word you are taking home and in your heart will cause anything that must stand in your life to stand. I know this word of God I preach. I know quite a number of things. I don't know, I just don't know how to preach it by the grace of God. I know I know a number of nuances around it. And I have to add it to the preaching. Otherwise, I haven't helped you. It attention. Attention. Hallelujah. And it takes effort. It's so easy to pay. How many you know that it's so easy to pay attention? Or how many of you admit that it's so easy to pay attention? This mind. Johnny Walker. This mind. It's so easy to, to catch it. For, especially on the word. It takes effort. I'm telling you. It's just like entering the way. Say, oh, attention. They say, nah, pay attention. Hey, nah, pay attention. It, 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 pay, it, it is just like going to owe in a bank, paying a bank you owe. It cut you and you owe. See, pay. Pay. He put pay there intentionally. Attention is what we pay to get the most out of the word of God. He has paid the price. You want to say, we owe and then we could not pay. He paid and then we don't want to pay, 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 pay. After paying, you also have to pay attention to what he paid. Otherwise, what he paid will be sold to you again. So I repeat myself. Say, if you don't pay attention, what Jesus has paid for, you don't pay attention to what he paid for. Somebody will pass back and come and sell what Jesus has paid for you. No, sell it to you, and you pay it, you pay double. Why? You just felt that finished work that have been paid. What do I have to pay again? I have to enjoy it. Next, number three. This is you have finished paying, you have paid attention, you have finished listening to the word of God. Now, after you do four things. One, you check. You have to be like the people in Berea. The Christians in Berea. In Acts chapter 17 verse 11. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. May it not be said that the church of Pentecost, the people there are fair-minded than the people in the church of Esther. Yeah, they are comparing churches. They don't compare me to another. They compare people in the Bible. There is healthy and spiritual and allowed accepted comparison. Hmm? Don't compare your husband to another husband. His own husband is doing for Christians. The ashes, we come and say the ashes are more serious than the choristers. They say, hey, the whole church. You compare them. And they are fair minded. The Jews, the, the, they, were, they were of noble character than those. Why? For they received the word of the message with great eagerness, with great readiness. Attention. And the Bible said, and they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. These people are some kind of people that I need in this church. Hey, you only yes we share that. Me many yes we share that. Me preacher, who are you going to examine it with? It's like, okay, <laughs> ah, are they going to? I didn't know how they did this. Are they going to compare to what Moses said? Or what is to go and examine whether it is true. Today, when men of God preach, they don't want to preach no mutine kokamusemka. But Paul Puna, it's not pastors and bishops that were examining all his sermons. So. Members. Paul, what what preach by the power of imagination is correct. Here. This is a pastor, it's well. What do you have? It's correct. Sit down, free some serious messages this year. Consecration. The nature of the new man. Ambassador, new creation. Hope. Power of imagination. How to read the Bible. How not to read the Bible. Have visual. Have visual. 
But all the message I have preached, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? Oh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite? What's your favorite? What's your favorite? Hey, the latest is your favorite. <laughs> Why is it your favorite? Is it because you want to check and you realize that it is correct? Mm. Even when you want to check it, it is correct. Or you paid attention. They want to cross check. You are cross checking who? Paul. You can't cross check me and come with questions. That's why you put the question box says because of cross checking. On phone church in Shemuda. I bought her four years. It is kind of yeah, yeah. And I was saying, I'm going to this kind of 12 boss. People don't ask questions. If you cross check, you have questions. Cross check. Cross check. Before you run with it, cross check. Hey. You don't want us to cross check you. They cross check Paul. And now they're out here. Paul, you don't cross check. You PNY. Cross check. I know you trust me. But you just cross check. With who? Hey, go and cross check. Go and check what. I'm glad to say. You know, Christopher, you know, 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 you see, you have to have a certain, you have to have the word to go and cross check. You see, if you have the mind to go and cross check, you need to go and, you have to pay attention so that you can go and cross check well. Do you understand? Yeah. Cross check number three. Still after after cross checking, you go and meditate on it. Four. Meditate on it. Joshua one eight. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but that shall meditate on it. That shall ponder on it, reflect upon it, think about it, day and night. And go and do it. Do what they said. They said the imagination. You go and imagine. When they said this, go and do it. Beloved, where is the word? Where is the word? These processes that we are talking about, where have you gotten through? And which of them have you taken the word of God you have put through? Beloved, you see, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, if we don't pay attention, to the word of God. Hebrews 2.1 Therefore we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard lest we drift away. Give me no other modern translation. This is still talking about add this one to the attention verses. I skipped it. It just came. God didn't want me to skip it. He has brought it back. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 <clears throat> We must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away from it. It's not that you were not told, but you didn't listen carefully. You didn't listen carefully. Pay attention to the truth you have heard. So it's not enough to hear the truth. Everybody can hear the truth. The Thessalonians heard the truth. The Bereans heard it. Their results was not the same. Pay attention. Since all, since, that, since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truth we have heard. Lest in any way we may drift past them and slip away. Pay attention. Pay attention. Meditation is one of the ways you pay attention to the word. Meditation. Pay attention when it's being said. You still pay attention after. Find a time in a week where you meditate on what was said on Sunday and Tuesday, pay attention upon all the many hours God has given you in the week. You can block one hour or two hours or 30 minutes to really reflect on the sermon again, to give it root. We sweat. We sit down for hours. Me, I sit down for hours. To put, if nothing at all, do it for me. Look at the way I'm sweating. Look at me. The, look at the way I'm sweating. I sat down to sweat for hours to put it together. Come and sweat and put it to you. If nothing at all, for my labors, for my labors, for my labors of, I mean, the, the reason why you honor me 
You know I mean? The reason why I do pious appreciation, the reason why I am deserving of double honor. Look at that, I'm sweating. I've left my handkerchief so. Look, the reason why I'm deserving of double honor is because of this. So if you do all this and you not go and meditate and cross check and ponder and pay attention, of what use you live in, live in, live in, live in, live in, live in, let it be there. Hallelujah. If not, if not for yourself, at least for me. For me. We have all done things for our fathers. That own person papa nisi kam own person ne brebe yekwa, own person me brebe yekwa. If you if if you don't love your life, and you don't want the thirty fold results, you don't want the hundred fold results, you don't want the the sixty fold results. You me I want it. Do it for me. Pay attention. This word has transformed many lives, including mine. To those who pay attention to it, go and ask Mary. Be it unto me, according to the word. He incubated the word and received it. Beloved, meditation is important too. Imagination. You miss a patre in two day service. You okay with one and two? So you haven't gone to check. You preach whatever it was. Okay. Careful. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, is true today. Meditation. Beloved, first, I mean, I mean uh, uh, Joshua 1 8, and say, by that you will make you, you will get good success. Meditation on the word of God will bring success. So meditate and get roots. Meditate to facilitate the understanding. When you pray for understanding 10 hours, and don't go and do meditation. You have wasted your time. Rebelable that the eyes of understanding will be enlightened. We pray, O God, that you understand. That the eyes of understanding. That we know the hope of our con. That is good. That is step one. Step two. You go and take what you were taught. And you turn your put your phone on flight mood for 30 minutes. And you separate yourself and sit there and say, okay, think about it. Think about it. I'm an root kakra. I did know I kakra. Persecution be bow. The curse of this life be bow. They will come and steal the word. These are the word stealers. Careful. That you may have good success. Meditation plays a good part. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that has all word. Blessed is the man nor stand in the path of nor sit in the seat of verse 2. But what does he do? I know the verse 1 is, is you. You don't sit in there. You are not a scoffer. You are not a scorner. When they ask you that Abigail and Israel are dating, you send them their numbers. They will call. You are not a scoffer. You are not all those things. Undiko concern. Oh no, wife, now I'm going to go and say, I know that in America, I say, because the two have become when you are talking to yourself. Because I'm going to say, 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 i am going to say i am going to say i am going to say i am going but your delight is not in the word of God. Your delight is not in the word. It's your, can you see your delight is in the word of God? As sweet as it comes from your church. And in his law, he med meditate day and night. The verse 3 na na epe. But two no die. Verse 3 no na na epe. But two no. It's only two things. Delight in my word. And meditate there in LSC. LSC. He shall be like. It's not a prayer topic. The verse 2 will give birth to it. Like a tree planted by the waters. He brings forth his fruit in this season. Now, brother, you shall be like a tree planted by the waters. Another way of saying is that I, may you meditate on the word of God. May you meditate on the word of God. Asa, this is the fruit of it. But if he said this, you are not excited. If he said that, may your delight be in the word of the Lord. Amen. You see the season. You see the amen. See the amen. May everything you touch prosper. Yeah. 
Bro, they are white. These are they are white men. Black. Men. May everything you touch prosper. May your life never wither. You see the amen. That's the thing. May you meditate day and night. <laughs> May you meditate day and night. May you meditate day and night. Let me continue. There is also, and whatever you do, whether you sell pure water or you sell sobolo, whether you sell charcoal, whatever you do will prosper. It's not that thing that will prosper. You will prosper. The means the business is prospering. The business doesn't need prosperity. It doesn't need prosperity. Wherever you stay, you prosper. When you go to stay in Congo, you prosper. Stay in Ghana, you prosper. Wherever you go, you prosper. How does that happen? Let your delight be in this word. And put it in your mind all the time. Listen. Otherwise, hey, you go to U.S. You go to U.S. And you, you desire to be in Congo again. I'm telling you. Kanu kwacho, nyami adrenu, enuni. Yen yen. Yen tu ana sebi. Yen chau fake. Yen 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 kan edi. Even this is difficult for me, but I have to tell you. I have to tell you. I have to tell you. Once in a while, I delete certain social media apps from my phone, so that I can I can. Sometimes we are we are all in battles. Somebody sent me uh, a video. Of course, Pastor Jesh. I don't know whether he's watching from Canada. He sent me a video, and the video was on TikTok. I don't have the TikTok app on my phone, and I wanted to watch it three days ago. I said, I should download the app before I can watch. I said, Ah, I should download the app. So I said, oh, That's it. Told me I'll go there, but I may have the be. And me, me, we have a bad hold on one dress. I said, Videos not talk to us, so no. They say, I'll send me download the app now and send out my share video. No video, no, so no. He's doing some concert to me, so another pastor. You know, that pastors we have, we share things. So this this man, I have to see what he say. So I have to go to App Store and I downloaded the TikTok and I watch the thing. Me not show me another video, another video, and I put my hand on it like this. As he on his store. Bah. I have a people to study to come and feed and preach. If I if I watch this thing three hours a day, how will I meditate to come and explain like the way they are listening? Would they? So I realized I so I said that when I'm bored and I want to I will I for data by the good of the problem. So if I want, I will install, now wash, now then I finish, I will delete. Or if you we yes, we yes, twa swa, I can say minja no have one week, never be car. In the meantime, the WhatsApp is okay. I think the Facebook is okay. I recently checked my got a notification on my phone. They said inactive applications on my phone. What I want to delete them. Instagram was one of them. And Snapchat was one of them. A lot of them said, hey, I haven't gone to this place for a long time. They started to delete them. They started to delete about 14 apps. About, about seven of them was the ones that number five. Share the word. Listen. There is no better way of retaining the word than sharing it. After listening and reading, share. Acts, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Teaching them, verse 20, teaching them. Listen, if you want to retain it, you want to keep it in your heart, you don't want to safeguard it from the word thief, the devil. Listen, get some people that every day when you come and listen to the word of God, you also, after your cross-checking and after your meditation, 
when you go to the office, have some security man, a brother, a sister, a neighbor, a wife, even people in this church who don't come to church, they can be your own congregation where you share the word. Beloved, all the reason we don't remember you haven't practiced is because you haven't shared. You have a responsibility to make disciples. Not just to preach the gospel to them, but to disciple them. That if you had a disciple whom you own the responsibility of training the word of truth, in whose life you are pouring your life to achieve spiritual growth, you grow yourself. Why? Because when you hear the word like this, you have an opportunity to also go and teach them. The reason why we look sometimes okay and knowing more than you is because we teach. I have studied this thing and I'm teaching it. And one day I'll teach it again. And I teach it. That's why teachers look like they know more. Teaching, you have to learn before you can teach. And in teaching, we learn. How many of you have taught and whilst you were teaching, you were saying and you were, the, you were, you were saying things you didn't know? How many of you have taught before? At home fellowship. Anyway, we went for evangelism. Listen, there's a well, God is in you. The Holy Ghost is in you. You have no idea. There's a word. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You haven't opened the tap. Start preaching the word and see. You'll be amazed what you know, what the spirit in you know. You'll be amazed what you know. Sometimes you don't know what you know. As I stood here today, I have said many things that I didn't know. I've said many things that I know in my notes. I have quoted verses not in my notes. How did I exercise that if I will be sleeping? Because I'm standing here and I'm teaching. Who are you teaching? Ask your neighbor. When is the last time you taught somebody? The mothers and the fathers here. Your children. Find a way you can, you can tie yourself with the responsibility of you. Find a way to summarize this. To even go and teach your own children. How about going to teach your own children? Oh, man, I won't show my day. But you say you love them so much. You love them so much. <laughs> but you know the power of education is a key. The spiritual education is a, is a padlock. Man, as you teach your children, eh? some people are looking for the babies that the children you have, you are not teaching them. The way they will teach them. But they don't have them. You have them, and it's every day cocoa melon. Every day cocoa melon. You, you can say, today you are crying. Sit down. Let me teach you. You try and teach you. You can even put it as hard as mine. Grace. <laughs> eh? That way you have been teaching Daniel and A. Teach them. Husbands, are you here? All the husbands, raise your hand. Teach your wives. Say, sit down. Sit down. Baby girl, sit down. Sit down. Paul. I say, man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm somebody's husband, no. He has been teaching you. It's all home fellowship one. No? I don't. After the friend is saying. Eh? That's why I have your phone on. The children are not here. But listen, 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 husbands. Are you a teacher in the house? Yeah. A teacher. He was trying to he was trying to get where is Naira? Eh? The man's head is empty. The ladies here, if you're a man and you want them, you have to. You have to be able to explain. When they ask that, what pastor taught today, I don't understand. Can you 
Can you explain it to me? Who and who are dating here? Clement. Clement is dating here. You are dating my daughter. Are you dating my daughter? So when we close search, the ladies, I'm giving you response. If you also don't do it, it's you. If you don't do it to get them to learn so that clear all darkness and rubbish and superfluity of nothingness out of their head. And then you go and put a ring on your finger and it manifests in your home. Don't call me. Put the let them work. What you say, cross here. Huh? The pastor can maintain and say, Can you explain to me? Now you say, What? Oh, okay. Oh, I was here. I was here. I was Ah, uh, okay. Then Tuesday too. Then another Tuesday. We turn two days, two weeks. Now it's a Tuesday service. Now pastor taught. That this this is the Hosea chapter two verse thirteen. No, the explanation pastor gave was not clear to me. Can you help me? But who the who pizza? Oh, who the who the who? Oh, I'm going on. My Christmas idea, Independence idea. Uh, uh, what is it? Sun idea. Sana, mother she dead. In come my birthday idea. Here, here, here. Boy name back, boy name back clubhouse on Pempire. It doesn't bother you. Clubhouse na ekano on Babi, Ahumachi. I like the way you are laughing. When you say he should join. And oh, 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 it's my phone. Eh, the data. Eh, the data. Your, oh, 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 your children's father. You see, your children's father. Your children's father is one behavior. But are you laugh. You see, it's funny. You can laugh. But when you laugh, after laughing, go and cross-check. Go and meditate on it. Some years ago, I'm kind of life in here. I'm telling you. Go and share. When you are sharing, you are learning. And last one, go and listen again. In case you don't know where the word is. In case all the word I've preached to you, you have forgotten. You haven't. It's not too late. You see, we need to take advantage of technology. Telegram. Listen, watch me. I pastor nearly over 200 people. I don't have a video on YouTube that has 20 views. Me, I'm not some of those pastors that are hungry for views and like this, 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 this generation, we are sick. One of our sickness is, 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 is share, like, and comment. We are a validation hungry or thirsty generation. The people feel that accomplishment is defined in likes, comments, and shares and views. So they don't feel when, when they post something, people haven't watched a comment, they feel they you know, that's what I'm talking about. Me. For the word of God. Hey, listen. David said, Once have you spoken, twice have I heard. That's why you have to prick your ears. Listen. The things I teach you here, even if some pastors listen, they have to listen again. I have pastors come and listen, and they have come to listen and listen, and they've gone back and they've. they've, they've but the, the chief pastors who are here, when they listen once, they're okay. Listen, me, there's no sermon I have preached here this year. The power of imagination, all the three parts, I've listened to them again. Listen, I tell you the truth that. If you, have, if you have not been able to cultivate the art of listening to sermons after you have heard them, you have not started your spiritual growth journey, or you do not have, you have no idea how much you can grow and how much the Lord can use you if you don't listen to sermon tapes, videos, and audios. You have to plan deliberately on how you are going to do that. Until that is part of your life, you will never resemble a daughter or a son of this house. In, I mean, in measure of what you have deposited in you. 
Go and listen again. Take advantage of YouTube. Go and watch the sermons again. In your car, when you are driving, in your car, in your home, create an environment. You can take me to your house and I can be a roommate in your bedroom. Can be in your car every time. Today, some time ago, people invest. When I was going up and I had a hunger to listen to the word of God, we used to pay. Today, no church can sell CDs. First, you to, you have to have CDs. Let me watch CD, you know, CD bag. Same on Shishemu. And then, we stream you on your tongue CDs. Now, so for years, come on, what is it? What is it? Then, you stream me as answer that YouTube. Or, tongue there now, so for back on it, then YouTube, you have a share, no? Or they keep it. You don't take advantage of it. How many of you have gone to YouTube to go and watch the pause? Go and listen to it again. Or listen, you just listen and share with somebody. You don't have the passion to share the gospel with people. The, the Facebook, I just realized that hey, this, this church, I know, the three people are down for Facebook. It's, it's, I realized that, wow. Nobody is my friend on Facebook. Nobody is my friend on Facebook. Not even my, one of my, my 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 sons in whom I'm well pleased, Derek. Derek is not even my friend on Facebook. He's not my friend on Facebook. If Derek is not my friend, who is, who is my friend on Facebook? Let's forget about but me see, Facebook knows you so charm than all the other. It's okay. We all we all follow different different things over there. Sister Numa Shintia Kwasil Hoka cry, get updates and things. But can you plan spirituality? Can you block certain times for the spirit and your and your 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 inner man where you go there go to youtube get a day in a week you go to youtube and listen to your pastor's sermons as i'm saying i've said it before and this is not the first i'm saying eh but when i was saying people have been pricked their ears and today too some people have pricked some people have been pricked i beg you in the name of god until you listen again. God speaks once. But we don't have the ability to hear and understand once. So David said, he spoke once. But I heard 16 times. I heard it four times. Pastor preached once. That was God speaking. I heard it once. I heard it twice. Four times. Sometimes I listen to my sermons that me now prepared. And me now preach. The sermons I've preached, I have me, I have listened to them four, five, six times. Take advantage of YouTube and grow and remind yourself of the word and take advantage to store it. No more way now, yeah. And ma, I said, I'm going to cry. 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 I'm going to Say it and bad. Once a day she assembly tintimwa or bra boom. And che ain't tintima and swaba. Messi assembly ain't tima and swaba. Any hina and swaba. I know what I have put in all of you. I know what I have taught you. If I never teach you again, the truth I have taught you, my sermon bank, when you go to YouTube and go to Telegram. My sermons I have taught over, I have taught over there. If you can go back, if you are not, if in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Be student of the word. Be men and women of the word. Love the word. Pray into the word. Pay attention when it is being taught. Go and cross check it. Meditate on it. Share with somebody. And when you are done, make it a cycle. Go and listen again. And start the process again. And I see the fruit of the word of God in your lives. I see hundredfold. I see sixtyfold. I see thirtyfold. By all means, the word that God has sent 
will not remain, will not return to him void. I pray that it will accomplish the purpose for which he sent it into your lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.